First, today's lesson is going to be on point of view. So I just want you to take a look at this picture first uh, and kind of get a feel for what's going on. We have the giraffe and we have the zebra and they both have very different points of view or perspectives. So if you look along the left hand side, it says, what do you know about point of view? So I want you to just think about that in your head. Everyone has a different point of view. Your grandmother has a point of view on how things should be done. Your parents have a point of view. Um, you have a point of view. Your younger brothers and sisters or your older brothers and sisters. And those things are actually called perspectives. So if you look at this picture, you have the giraffe and his perspective of the day. If somebody were to go up to him and say, giraffe, how do you feel about today? The giraffe will probably tell you that it's sunny outside, um, doesn't seem to be a cloud in the sky, because from his perspective, he's above all of that, and all of he, all he kind of sees is the sun shining. However, if we would ask the zebra what he sees or what his perspective of the day is, it would be a little different. To him, it's cloudy, it's rainy, it's probably gloomy and a little grim. So they have two different perspectives on the same exact day. The same thing happens in life. If there is an accident, everybody's going to notice different things. Everybody's going to have a different opinion or a different perspective on why things happened or how things happened. That's just life because we're all unique and we're all our own individual. So what we need to think about today is why authors choose one point of view over another. Why are they sharing uh, the giraffe's point of view on the day instead of the zebra's or vice versa? So with that in mind, here are our LEQs for today. What are the advantages and disadvantages of the various points of view? And how is trash unique in its narrative structure? So first and foremost, I'm going to kind of review first and second person point of view really quickly. A lot of this information will be old to you, something we're just doing for review, and some of it will be new. But either way, I want you to take some notes so you have them to look back on because we're going to use them in the future. So first of all, first person point of view. The narrator is a character in the story, and the story is told from his or her perspective. I want you to think about towers falling. Our main character was Deja. She's the one telling the story, so we get everything from her point of view. She uses pronouns like I, we, me, my, and us. Now, not that you're not going to find other types of pronouns in there, but when she's referring to the actions or the things that are happening, she uses those first-person pronouns that you see there on your screen. Benefits to using first-person point of view. One, it's more emotional because we're closer to the character. We're in the main character's head, so we know what their emotions are, whether they're happy or they're sad or they're angry or they're frustrated. We can get to see some of the internal monologue where they're kind of talking to themselves, that conversation that happens in your head that doesn't always get heard by other people. There's also a stronger emphasis on internal conflicts. Again, because we're in the main character's head, we get to know what their fears are, what their dislikes are, and their likes, which helps us understand them better, but not necessarily others, which leads us to our disadvantages. The disadvantages of first-person point of view is an unreliable narrator. Because we're only hearing the story from the main character's point of view, we don't necessarily know if the information she's giving us is neutral or if it's biased. Think about Deja. She only knows what she thinks and what she feels, so some of the ways that she's looking at the things that are happening around her, like her dad not sharing information, she sees it as him being sick and not a great dad, but really he's trying to protect her, but we don't necessarily know that until the end of the story. So that makes a first person point of view story a little weak because sometimes we don't know the motivations behind all of the other characters. It also provides a limited a limited perspective. Again, because we only know what her thoughts and feelings are and how she sees things, it kind of leaves out some of the information that might help us to understand some of the other characters like her dad and her mom. Second person point of view, not something we see very often. Normally, uh, it's used to directly address the reader. The author or the narrator is talking directly to you as you're reading, which is why we see pronouns like you and your. The benefits of using second person, there's a directness in the tone because it's kind of a two-way conversation between the narrator and the reader. It puts some ownership on the reader because it's pulling them into the story and asking them to do something or asking them to believe something. 
Uh, and that kind of leads us into the drawing the reader into the story. Disadvantages. It's really, really difficult to do in fiction, which is why we don't see it a whole lot. Normally, it's just used in recipes, or if you think about your GPS in the car, that's the second person point of view. At this time, please pause your screen and make sure you copy these notes down on your paper. At this point, we're going to talk about third person point of view, which is essentially broken down into two separate categories. We have third person limited and third person omniscient, which just means that they're all knowing. Let's focus on the third person limited at first. You'll eventually see as I'm talking about this that there are some things that overlap between the two. There are some similarities, but there's also things that keep them uh, separate in their own categories. So third person limited. The narrator is outside the story telling events through the eyes of, the, of or through the eyes and perspective of only one character in the story. So the narrator is kind of observing. They're like the fly on the wall, just watching things happening and almost reporting on it. But they're only reporting on one character in the story. So we only know what one character is thinking and feeling. It uses pronouns like he, she, they, him, her, and them, all those third person pronouns. Advantages to doing this is we have a consistent narrator um, the narrator is kind of reliable in that um, they're telling only the things that they see. They don't have a bias going into it. They're not just going to tell you the good things or the bad things. Just like a news reporter, they're going to try and give you the facts. Other advantages, there's more chances for surprises because we don't know what all of the other characters are thinking and feeling. We only know what that one character is thinking. Disadvantages, sometimes the, uh, the, the narrator can be unreliable, again, because they we're not in the head of that main character. Also, there's a less emotional connection because the narrator's not a character in the story. They're only reporting on it. Third person omniscient is when the narrator is outside the story but can tell events through the eyes and perspectives perspectives of everyone in the story, or at least multiple characters. So third person omniscient, all-knowing, they know the thoughts and feelings of all or most of the characters. Third-person limited, they only know the thoughts and feelings of one. Same pronouns as third-person limited, he, she, they, him, her, and them. Advantages to the omniscient third person is that we get more perspective, so we get the thoughts and feelings of more characters in the story. And also, a really cool addition to that is that the story can be taking place in multiple settings. The characters don't have to be together. You might have one character at school, one character at home, one character in a different state. And in third person omniscient, we can still, even though they're all in those different locations, know what each of them is thinking because the narrator knows everything. Disadvantages to this is that sometimes the stories become confusing because it's hard to know who's doing what and to keep our characters straight. Uh, the other disadvantage is that it becomes less emotional. There's a less emotional connection to the characters because um, we don't get to know one character specifically. We get to know lots of different characters, so it doesn't give us the time to kind of build that connection or that personal relationship with the characters. At this point, please pause your uh, video and take some notes on these two points of view. At this point, I want you to think about the question at the bottom of your notes, which says, what points of view does trash utilize? Notice it says what points of view, not just what point. There are a, a few different points of view in the story, so I want you to think about what points of view are used and perhaps find some examples of where they are used or some chapters where they are used in the story and make notes of those at the bottom of your paper and then we will talk about those together as a class to make sure that we're all kind of on the same page.